Picture this. You're stranded on an island, somewhere in the middle of the ocean, with no one around you and no way off. Would you have what it takes to survive? You'd need the essentials. Food, shelter, and plenty of water. But here's the catch. The island you're on has no water. No rivers, no lakes, and very scarce rainfall. Seems impossible, right? Turns out, those are the exact same conditions of the island of Malta, a place whose freshwater resources are virtually non-existent. Yet, remarkably, the people of this island have not only survived here, but have thrived for over 8,000 years. This raises an interesting question. How did the communities of ancient Malta secure the drinking water they needed to survive all these years? The answer lies in the ingenious solutions the Maltese have managed to cultivate over the ages. Join us as we uncover these secrets and trace the line of ancient intuition all the way to the technological marvel of today. Located 80 kilometers off of the coast of Italy, nestled firmly in the Mediterranean Sea, lies Malta, a country whose water scarcity stems from a unique geological and climatic paradox. The country receives modest and unpredictable rainfall, and almost all of it quickly disappears underground or runs off into the sea. There are no permanent rivers or lakes on the island, no above-ground fresh water to speak of. Under such circumstances, water naturally became the most precious resource. From prehistoric farmers to medieval knights and beyond, each generation of Maltese inhabitants faced the same challenge and responded with creativity. So, how did they do it? Whilst the French believed the best way to use a hole in the ground was to turn it into a dungeon, the Maltese thought a little differently, turning to cisterns for their water storing needs. These aren't the same cisterns that you'd find in your toilet, either. Gross, no. These cisterns were deep caverns carved right below settlements where rainwater could be stored efficiently. You would think that carving away at all that rock would be quite the undertaking as well. But in reality, the limestone present in most of Malta's geology made it quite easy to dig and work with, given how soft limestone is. It's not just any limestone either. Coralline limestone layers, which is limestone primarily composed of the remains of coralline algae and other marine organisms, was permeable enough to allow rainwater to seep through, settling above impermeable layers of clay down below, thus creating natural spaces where groundwater could accumulate. But more on that later. The cisterns themselves vary in structure and in some cases possess unique architecture indicative of their respective eras. Of the simpler designs, the miskatanks near the Menaidra and Ajarim temples are some of the earliest examples of engineered water storage. These were rock-cut cisterns carved into the limestone to collect and store rainwater for agricultural and domestic use. The miskatanks dated back over 5,000 years, becoming a testament to the Neolithic community's understanding of seasonal rainfall patterns and their adaptation with permanent storage solutions. Truly survivor material. At the Hypogeum of Hal Salfieni lies a sacred site, also Neolithic in nature, a subterranean temple and a necropolis, with rock-cut basins carved into the floor for water collection and multiple levels of chambers of different sizes and purposes. Whilst the integration of water collection architecture within the Hypogeum suggests the significance of water for survival, water may have also held spiritual or ceremonial value akin to practices observed in other religions. And seeing as how the majority religion in Malta is Roman Catholicism, it wouldn't be a stretch to assume that more than a couple of babies were probably dunked here. Now, how about that groundwater? Recall the layers of clay that sit below the coralline limestone layer, impermeable layers that allowed water to accumulate. Well, those often sat above other water tables at shallow depths, making them easier to access and vital for the survival of earlier settlements. They're known as perched aquifers, and they were typically found in the higher western regions of Malta, 
Unfortunately, whilst they were easy to get to, their limited capacity meant that they could not be used to support a large population all year round. Sea level aquifers, also known as the mean sea level aquifer, lie deeper underground and span much larger areas, holding far more water than the perched aquifers, but their depth made it difficult to access until technology advanced in the 19th century with the advent of motorized pumps. In 870 AD, during the Arab conquest of Malta, techniques were introduced to improve water management with considerations to Malta's arid climate. This included improved cistern designs, well placement, and irrigation techniques. Settlements were often deliberately located near reliable water sources, and agricultural practices were adapted to maximize water retention and reuse. An interesting way to pay rent for invading a country for sure. And funnily enough, not the last time it would happen. Around 1530, the Order of the Knights of St. John, also known as Knights Hospitaller, had arrived in Malta after being evicted from Rhodes by the Turks. The Knights of St. John had ruled over Malta for 250 years before being evicted by Napoleon Bonaparte in 1798. But during that time, they had made significant contributions to Malta's water management infrastructure. When planning the fortified city of Valletta in the 16th century, the Knights of St. John made water conservation a foundational priority. Every house was legally required to have its own well, and gardens were prohibited to minimize water usage. To further supplement the city's water supply, the Knights constructed the Wignacourt Aqueduct between 1610 and 1615. It transported water from natural springs in Rabat and Dingley across 16 kilometers to Valletta using gravity-fed limestone arches. The aqueduct remains as one of Malta's most iconic engineering feats, with several arches and decorative features still visible today. In 1851, the British introduced the first motorized pump system to Malta, a move that is arguably one of the few good things the British have done in history. This enabled large-scale extraction of water from deep-sea-level aquifers, something that was previously impractical with manual methods. This marked a major technological leap in Malta's water infrastructure, allowing access to greater groundwater reserves beneath the island, like those sea-level aquifers we touched on earlier. As Malta's population grew during the colonial era, the British oversaw the construction of multiple reservoirs, pump stations, and modern pipelines to transport and store fresh water across urban centers and rural districts. These developments laid the foundation for the centralized water distribution systems still in use today. Very cool Britain. Approaching modern technology now, we reach reverse osmosis, which is the process of water purification that involves forcing water molecules through a very fine filter, a semi-permeable membrane that allows for the removal of impurities such as salt and other dissolved substances. In 1982, Malta established its first reverse osmosis plant in Gar Lapsi, marking a turning point in its water security. For a time, this plant was the largest of its kind in the world, showcasing Malta's leap into advanced water desalination technology. With the increasing demands of urbanization and tourism, the plant would make purifying seawater possible with high pressure filtration. Today, Multiple reverse osmosis plants operate across the Maltese islands, including in Pembroke and Chirkewa. These plants produce over half of Malta's drinking water, with the rest supplemented by groundwater, creating a hybrid model of sustainable water sourcing. From cisterns to underwater temples, knights and medieval engineers to reverse osmosis. Malta's history is a saga of innovation born from necessity. This small island, so deficient in natural freshwater, managed to sustain an uninterrupted civilization by continually adapting to its environmental constraints. A trail of history spanning millennia, about the culture of a people who refused to resign to drought and barrenness. Today, when you turn on a tap in Malta, you benefit from 8,000 years of accumulated wisdom and effort in water management a legacy of human resilience, the will of generations to survive on a tiny rock in the middle of the sea. Enjoyed this video? Make sure to give us a like and subscribe for more content on this strange blue planet of ours. Every little bit counts. Until next time, and may your reservoirs be plenty and accessible.